Hello, welcome back on my channel. Um, I got a, a little idea about the use of diodes on your model railroad. Now, this is your basic diode, and you will see this uh, in many forms. But a diode is strictly saying a diode, and I want to do a little video about the use of diodes in model railroading. Uh, so uh, don't uh, let's go. So here we go. Here we have uh, some a drawing of some diodes. This is the symbol for in a uh, diode in a schematic. This is how it looks like. If you have this one here, you can see it. There's a little. Uh, band on there so this is your diode like there this is a diode in a schematic this is the diode how it looks like and you can see it has uh, a point and a little stripe there and this stripe here is this stripe here on your diode now what is a diode a diode is a one-way valve electrons can only move from this side through the diode but they can't move from here to there now this is called the anode this is called the cathode a diode is just strictly saying a one-way valve you can uh, control currents with it so that it will flow one direction but it cannot flow the other and they have a really big uh, usage uh, there's a lot of use of diodes in your computer there are diodes uh, all around you there are diodes and power supplies there are diodes so even in the camera I'm using to film now is there are diodes in there so this is your normal diode uh, this is just a diode anyone any sort will do and they come in different shapes uh, this is a really big, this is roughly about 500 milliamps, uh, an amp it can switch. These two, uh, th four, they are diodes, uh, they come from my old uh, mobile power supply. And these are just uh, really beefy diodes, they sh can switch 8 amps of current. So they come really big. The other drawing here is an LED. An LED is also a diode. The word says uh, light emitting diode, LED. So LED is also a diode and we're going to be talking about them as well. This is the symbol for an LED and you can see it's the same as this one but now uh, there are a few arrows coming off of that. And those arrows indicate that these are emitting something in this case visible light and there are also infrared diodes in your uh, remote control for your television and so on and so on now you can have this symbol but with the arrows pointing towards it then it's a photo diode which responds to light instead of emitting light not gonna talk about that one, but I have an example of a simple LED. Here is one. This is your basic LED. And uh, as you can see it has a, a shorter pin and a longer pin. And the longer pin is the positive or the anode. And the shorter pin is the cathode. So, uh, now this is one form of an LED. This is a pretty common form. Also we have sub mounted LEDs and those are these little puppies. These are the LEDs. They're really small and tiny. And they are you can get them even smaller than this. This comes from a, a lighting strip. So they are all around you as well. LEDs. 
Now we're gonna go into um, things where do you use diodes for? Well, I told you they are a valve that can allow current go in like so, but it cannot get through like so. So where do we use it? And as I told you in power supplies. And here we have this is one of the most common uses for diodes is to rectify your alternating current to DC current and you use a variety of devices this is a and they luckily you don't need to use uh, four different diodes uh, uh, separate diodes you can get them in a nice uh, package like this or uh, like this this is 25 amps this is about uh, maybe five maximum here's another one and here's a little bit bigger circuit board uh, one but of course you find them also on uh, you will also find them on not only for DC or AC to DC but also on your decoder and this is a function decoder from Lens, an older one. But you can see here, and I will do it a little bit more like this. This is a diode, this is a diode, there's a diode, and there's a diode. And these four are configured in this way. So even on your decoders, uh, there are diodes. What's AC current? What's DC current? Well, I draw up a little bit, run up something. This is a, a, a picture what you could see on an oscilloscope. And now you shouldn't be looking at this side, but we're just going to watch the AC side. AC current is something which start at zero volts. This is uh, volts this way, and this is the time. So. Here is positive voltage, negative voltage. Current will be at zero volts, then it will rise up to its maximum and drop down to zero and then to negative again. Uh, to negative, and then it will go up again to zero and it will continue on doing that. Now, as you can see, and that is why it's called alternating current, the wires on an alternating current. Uh, system sometimes this one is positive sometimes this one is positive and it's switching between it because of that you cannot drive a, a motor on it because this an, a DC motor won't run on that uh, some electronics won't work on AC so if this one is positive when it's here it's positive so then this wire is the positive and this one I'll put it in, and this one will be the zero I'll put a zero because it will it's a zero it's not a, a negative in a sort of way so this positive current which is flowing all this time there is a positive current on this wire then it will go in here and it will go to this diode and this diode. Now this diode is blocking its way. It, it's dropping in and it can't pass through. However, this diode is open so the current will go through here and out here to the positive. Uh, when the current is going here, it comes down uh, through the users, it finds this diode and you could say hey it will go through there but it will not this diode is blocked because of the pos the positive current here this positive current is all the way here it's positive between here and here there's positive on there so it cannot go there but it will go through here because this diode blocks the positive there's no current here and it will go there 
back to the zero. When it reverses, and this one becomes positive and this one becomes negative uh, zero, then current will flow here. We cannot go that way, we'll go this way and goes through the users and back up here. This one is blocked by the positive here and it will go this way cannot go that way again it's blocked by the positive here and it will go out to the zero and that's when it's in this time now if you this is a, an oscilloscope picture and this is the picture on this side of your dial of your rectifier bridge rectifier it's called now you can see here is the positive, here is the negative, and zero positive, and it will look something like this. This is what you get from your um, uh, uh, from a power supply which is stabilized, and you put in some other components, for instance, a uh, capacitor, just one like, something like this. You will put in here and maybe some other uh, stuff uh, you can do in there but to get a DC current but this is your DC current as it comes from a battery that's the better thing so if you have the wires connected up like this to your oscilloscope positive and minus and you have the minus to the minus of the oscilloscope and the positive to the positive of the oscilloscope then you will get something like this if you reverse them and then we go to the negative here it is we get this on your oscilloscope so you will get a line down here and that's roughly about what a bridge rectifier and what it does so I hope that is uh, enough for you now let's look what it all started from we started on talking about diodes and the use in your model railroad now bear with me this uh, line here is a rail and this is a rail this is a locomotive a basic standard locomotive as comes with starter, ki uh, starter kits uh, start sets uh, for beginners in model railroading you get these simple locomotives most of the times they have a light at the front maybe a light in a cab I just drew it in here and a light at the rear now what is happening we get our rectified current coming from the, uh, the power supply and your regulator and we feed in positive on the top rail and it goes in through the rail contacts which are here and they're also on the wheels uh, so I just drew these two in here but most of the times all the wheels will have power pickup but this is the power pickup it comes in here all this side is positive goes here goes here goes here goes here and as the current continues we go through the motor the motor will this is the positive connection of the motor this is the negative connection of the motor the motor will start rotating driving your train in this direction and basically all your lights at the rear in the cab and in the front are on they because the current can go straight through the light bulb here and out through the track back to your power supply through the motor up back to the track through the cab light and back to the track and here also also all the lights are on that's not something you want if this is a white light and this is a white light if it's your rear light and it's a red one you don't have to there's nothing wrong with this but you don't want that this is a white light this is a white light so you want something to 
switch these lights on and off or when it's uh, you, you reverse the current you make this one the negative and that one the positive and your locomotive is running this way this light should be on and this light should be off so what do we do we take the diode now in most uh, locomotives there will be a tiny little circuit board which holds two or more diodes so I put a diode in here and what happens now is that current is flowing this way goes through the motor motor runs goes that also goes through this light it still uh, still is on uh, this light is on and this light is also on but we're still going in this direction so this light should be off well how to do that we need a diode in here which is blocking so we're gonna draw it like this now what happens is that current comes here goes there sees this hey cannot get through so this light will stay off and everything else is on when you're running your locomotive now this light is on this light is off cap light is on motor is running and presto you got it when you reverse it make this negative and this the positive then current comes in from here goes here goes through the light sees this hey can pass through it and goes back that way current will go through the motor motor will start turning in this direction locomotive will go this, this way and current goes there cap light is on because there's no diode there it's always on and it comes here goes through the light stops here so this light will not light up and you have your front and rear signal now go to do use something with LEDs because that's something you find a lot more in model trains and that's LEDs now I've drawn this with the negative on the top rail and the positive on the bottom rail and the motor is still the same positive here is positive here so this mo locomotive is now going in reverse if you power it up what happens yeah simply set positive comes in here goes through the motor I will make a connection here because otherwise it's not connected this one is connected so positive current goes in here goes through the motor gets in here motor rotates this way train goes that way current flows through and back to the power supply current also flows through here through a resistor this resistor is necessary otherwise your LED will burn out you cannot just put uh, 12 volts on it or it will burn out so goes through the LED and this LED is in the right position so this one will light up and go there this one cap light yeah simple uh, a light bulb it will be on so no worries and it goes here but it meets the LED in the wrong direction from the wrong side the positive is on the wrong side so cannot get through and will not light up also again a resistor that is nice same locomotive again only now we have also got an LED in the cab as I told you an LED will only light when the positive is on this side of the LED and the negative is on this side if you reverse it the LED won't be on I just showed you in the other 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 uh, other schematic now how do we get this LED to work <coughs> yeah you could put uh, you could do two LEDs in there and make them uh, opposite uh, to each other so you can draw it out and 
put one in with the positive side on this side and the negative side on that one so that you have two LEDs but then you have two extra LEDs you can also use and I drawn it here not in a big schematic uh, thing but this is a bridge rectifier you hook up the AC side of the bridge rectifier and you will always find out which it is uh, what, what the, the connections are that's where these little waveforms are those are the connections for the AC power and you can also see that here is the negative side and this is the positive out so positive out negative in so when you put that in there and you hook up this LED what happens is that when I make this positive the top one current will flow in meet the bridge rectifier and it will go in like I told you in the uh, little talk about bridge rectifier and it will go past to this LED it will light up and it will go the current will flow back when I reverse the current make this one positive the current flows in here meets again this bridge rectifier and allows current only to flow in the right direction so positive will be positive again and this LED is on so that's why you need if you have an LED in your cab and you want it to light continuously then you need a bridge rectifier to make this LED work again here there is a front and rear LED lights and of course if you have um, this is the white one and if you have uh, uh, a red one here which needs to be on uh, when you are uh, running it in uh, 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 reverse you need uh, red I'm not drawing all together nicely because I'm uh, watching it through the camera <laughs> you can just simply put in an LED a red one like this and I put a little a few arrows with it so there it is you can put it in this is the red one and you can see current flows in positive comes in here oh, this one won't light up but positive goes in here this one will light up so this is the white one this is the red one when you reverse the locomotive this one will come on and this one will be off this one always will be on because it says is bridge rectified and it will always be getting positive current in this flow this one will only be on in reverse and if I put in another one like this so we're just gonna do that put in a red signal like so LED hop hop little uh, resistor So here we have uh, uh, the, the red light so when this train is running in forward this light is on and this red light is on when it's running in reverse this light is on and this red light is on and the cab is always on in both directions now if you have DCC do I need diodes on my DCC layout yes you can still use diodes on your DCC layout and you do use them because as I told you on your decoders and this is the same function decoder there are these four diodes which rectify the current so that your diode or that your decoder with its microprocessor here can operate it let's do a little simple uh, cheap pass and this is what I found with LGB the early ones they only had uh, this is this so this is your DCC locomotive it has uh, the same power pickups here on the track and the wheels it has a motor it has a rear light a front light a cab light and of course your decoder now you see the wiring is a little bit different because yeah 
uh, we don't have uh, wires running directly from the track to the motor. No, it goes through your decoder. And your decoder uh, will receive messages from your digital command station. And it will tell this decoder what to do. So, how is the lighting here switched? Well, simply you have the rear and the front lights are connected to the D positive. I put D positive here because it's the decoder plus. The decoder plus is your common connection to all your outputs on your decoder. Your function outputs, everything comes from decoder plus and it's switched in the negative on your function uh, output. So if you have a function output 1 that's a negative. It will become negative as soon as it's activated and the decoder plus will be powering it. So decoder plus is hooked up via this wire to the cab light, the front light and the rear light. Uh, function 0 on most decoders is the light function and the light function has two outputs and they switch with the direction of travel. So when the locomotive is going to the front, uh, forward the light front output will become negative and switch on the front signal if you have switched on the lights. If you're going in reverse light rear will go on LR L -R. light rear will be on and the rear light will be on Cap light I put on function 1. Why did I only put one function and the lights on here? Well, because this is a cheap OS, uh, or cheap, it is one of the first decoders and it only has these two outputs. You can switch the lights on and off and you can switch an extra light, extra light so, such as a cap light or running uh, numbers or something like that. So that's here. Now what if you have a locomotive which has a horn and if you are an LGB fan no. now what if now what if one of your if you have a, an older locomotive and it has such a decoder in here and it has a horn now the first locomotive uh, LGB brought out it was a green uh, Schuma diesel locomotive. It had lights in the cab, uh, lights in front and rear, a light in the cab, and it had a horn. You had only the two function buttons on your locomotive mouse. You had uh, with it. So, but you have only the lights for signal, uh, front and rear lights, and you have the one function button but we do have a cap light and I hooked it up here power is coming in going to the decoder up and going out and the decoder figures out whether to run the motor in this direction or that direction and let's say I switch I turn on the front light because I have selected forward motion and I turn on the lights and forward light should come on and it does. It will come on. Hey, nice. However, I want the cab light also to come on. So I hooked the cab light, spliced in the wire extra here, and light up, and it goes here, and presto, cab light will come on. However, I also want the cab light to come on when the train is running in reverse. So I give the reverse signal the train switches to uh, the decoder switches to the reverse it turns off the front light and turns on the rear light so power goes here or power negative goes here and it switches on this light it should come on also want the cab light to come on so I have put a wire here cab light will come on yes what still is ha what also will be happening is that you see this wire here and this wire here and this is a connection and it goes back to forward light 
and here it goes to rear light. So what happens? This light will also come on. I have no... All the lights are on and they're not directional with the locomotive. So if I'm running in the forward, the front light will be on, the cab light will be on, and the rear light will be on. If I'm running in reverse, it also will be on. Now how to get around this? You see here a few uh, cross outs because I made a few mistakes and that's why I'm doing it again. This is your typical locomotive as LGB brought out uh, their first digital set. It had a green locomotive in there, Shuma diesel locomotive, which had a horn, front, rear and the cap light. So, but only two outputs. The light output here, these two, and the function output. So, how did they do that? They used diodes. I draw in one, I will draw in the other one as well because it's necessary. Why these diodes? Well, they allow current to flow in one direction, this, but it will not allow negative to go anywhere here. So it will always allow this light to be on and that's what we want but we don't want this light and this light to be on at the same time because if we leave one of these these diodes out if you turn the lights on they're all on this one this one and that one whether you were moving in forward or reverse it will always be on that's why we put in these diodes here and you have this extra function output to control your horn or some other thing uh, what you want but in this locomotive it had a horn and it had these two diodes switching on the light in the cab so current uh, the negative is being turned on here current will flow through here this light is on also that light is on but no current can flow in this direction because this one is not negative it's positive positive wire goes through the light it's not a big resistor so it is a positive feed here and it was positive and this is positive nothing happens when you switch this one back to when the train is going in forward this one becomes negative and current can flow in this direction so but it will not and that's okay but it will not go uh, through here and let this one be on as well so that's what what what's going on you need something to block out this um, yeah that's it another use for uh, diodes on DCC layouts uh, are also on um, on your other uh, type of lay on uh, normal DC operated uh, layouts or maybe even an AC operated layout is this one and it's for wagons which have internal lights I put in this really big uh, this capacitor now it's probably a bank of capacitors which can hold and store the track current because that's uh, really important when you do uh, have uh, capacitors in your trains you can see this one rates at 35 volts now you do need to watch that if you want to buy capacitors but that's another video and I'm not going to do that much and you need a, a, a nice high value. This will only power these lights for a few milliseconds and then they're off. If you're using LEDs, then there will be a lot, they will be on a lot longer. But if you have this an AC power or a DC power or, or DCC power, at one point this one will be positive and this one will be negative 
in AC power it switches continuously. On a DC layout this one, one might be positive for 10 minutes and and half an hour this one will be positive because your train is running in this direction or it's going in this direction on DCC well it basically doesn't matter because they still are alternating and uh, let's say this is AC current alternating at this frequency and this is DCC it goes a lot quicker but it's still a D an AC current which holds a DC signal and blah 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 so and so but in order to to do this you you if you want to hook up a capacitor so that your lights will remain uh, without flicker or at least they when they go over a, a point or, or something like that and crossing that you want these lights to stay on for a little bit longer when you take the wagon off the, the rails or something then they will have to stay on you need again the bridge rectifier because if you reverse the polarity on your capacitor and it's an old one it will blow uh, there are enough videos on uh, YouTube uh, to see that so I'm not gonna do it maybe I am going to do it once Bridge rectifier, if you want to have lights in your wagon or you have uh, LED lights, let's say a lighting strip like this and you want to power it, you need a bridge rectifier because this one is positive, this one is negative or the other way around, I don't know exactly. It's on there, yeah. So in this case, this one is the positive, this one is the negative and I know for a fact that this is 12 volt. So you need some kind of resistor in here to feed this but you cannot just put this in your wagon and hook this up to your track there and hook this up to your track there and let's uh, go and run it because in one direction your LEDs will light up in the other direction they won't that's why you need this bridge rectifier and you can get them not only in these uh, big big uh, cases but also in nice round uh, little ones. Uh, this was this is one thing, but you can get them in round uh, ones, which uh, are uh, well about a centimeter high. What you do need to watch for if you are running on DCC on on if you want to use one of these on DCC, uh, this one is not capable of rectifying for DCC. It is alright to use here, you can use one of these, but they are only low frequencies. You need something with higher frequency because DCC is operating at kilohertz and this one is has maximum maybe of a hertz, uh, in hertz. So uh, for that you need a little bit higher speed uh, diodes and these blocks here come with higher speeds there are special ones that can handle higher frequencies so do watch out for that because if you don't um, these could heat up and cause yeah they, they, they're not designed to do it and they probably will fail and that will leave you with burned out LEDs or other electronics if you want to put a sound module in here and you have bought it somewhere and you just need to put in a rectifier and you put the sound module in there and it works that's a cow's a moo or something like that but it's not DCC you put it on DCC it could fail because these diodes like these will not switch as fast so they yeah, get a ripple and get st stuff on there happening which could damage your electronics which is behind this for normal lights mm, it probably will work but please check out the frequency and you can get this if you buy this from uh, any good supplier they should be able to tell you what the frequency, upper maximum frequency is for these devices. 
so please bear in mind to watch that you can also get these diodes here the single uh, single ones you can also get them for higher frequencies and there are differently numbered so ask your local retailer who sells you this ask them about the frequency range if you want to operate on DCC I think it's about 28 kilohertz for my uh, system but it could be higher it could be lower I don't know exactly but there's a, a standard for that uh, so if you have a diode which can uh, switch 100 kilohertz then you're okay this one will probably switch maybe a kilohertz so that's not enough it will fail and you can ruin up your uh, it can ruin your day so that's my little talk about diodes uh, if you have comments on this please do tell me uh, if I have something wrong please tell me I will make another video so uh, yeah well please rate and subscribe uh, comment yes thank you Hope it was information uh, enough for you and uh, hope you can do something with it. So uh, that's it for today. Goodbye.